The A229 is the main road between Chatham and Maidstone. When you go down Bluebell Hill, at the bottom there is a garage service station and then immediately a turning to the left. This is Old Chatham Road. It was the main road before the current dual carriageway superseded it 40-45 years ago. It then became a quiet backwater and for most of this period it's been a very convenient parking space for people who wished it to break their journey. At the top end there's a field each side but farther down there is housing and apparently in recent times HGVs, heavy goods vehicles, have taken to parking there overnight and they have been a nuisance to the residents there. So it was decided to uh, do something about it. In 2016, I circled into Old Chatham Road and I was absolutely amazed with what I saw. There was an absolute forest of plastic reflector bollards. Hundreds of them, I would say. I'd never seen anything like it. Initially I was amused at the silliness, really, of what I was seeing. But of course this quickly changed to irritation and then perhaps anger at the thought of all this public money that was being wasted on a project which was bound to fail. Two years later, 2018, again I cycled in, into the road. All the bollards have uh, disappeared. There's an excavator ripping a uh, metre wide channel through the concrete substructure of the road right down the centre line. And then into this channel, two parallel curb, concrete curbs are being placed this is backfilled with concrete and um, bollards placed on top. What was this, I thought? Well, of course, this work was presented as the creation of a cycle track. Now, I've cycled between Chatham and Maidstone many times over the years, and one part of the route where I never felt the need for a cycle track was Old Chatham Road. They have created a cycle track, but this is not the object of the exercise. Really, this is a parking control project. Here you can see in Dock Road, Chatham, a much busier location for traffic. That all that separates the cyclist from the motorist is this single white line. Why, th why therefore, in uh, this current project, is it necessary to create this massive barrier? But let us suppose for the moment that a barrier is required. Here again in Chatham, you can see a cycle track which has been there for many years. And all that separates the cyclist from the motorist is this single upstanding curb. Now, if such a, an arrangement had been adopted here in Old Chatham Road, with just a single upstanding curb bonded and pinned to the surface of the existing carriageway, probably about less than one fifth of the amount of concrete would be required. I'm sure if I bothered to look, that I would find a, a KCC mission statement saying how ecologically, ecologically concerned they are. But this is mere words. If the simpler arrangement had uh, been used, then of course we would have saved all that extra CO2 which is pumped into the atmosphere. And additionally, of course, the excavator itself pumping CO2 into the atmosphere and then the exhaust from the excavator with all its pollution. I suggest all of this is unnecessary. 
on this short length of road there are about 200 plastic reflector bollards. Why do we need all these? I'm sure we do not. There are many hundreds of miles of secondary roads in Kent which have poor alignments, poor sight lines, they're two-way working and yet mostly they do not have any reflector bollards. Here the uh, there's a very little gradient, the curvatures are smooth, the alignment's good, the sight lines are good. So why do we need so many? And there is the other consideration. What about the maintenance legacy as these bollards gradually get demolished? Are we going to have the a legacy of uh, disarray as is often the case where plastic bollards are used on secondary roads. This is a typical scene. Standing here, there are no cars, no cyclists. This is the situation for most of the time. How long would you have to wait for a car? Several minutes. The cyclists? Well, it's a sunny day, so there might be one within the hour. What thing could have been done here? Bearing in mind that this is just a quiet backwater. Well, the original centerline white line could have, could have been retained and then set into it some reflector road studs. And then set well back from the white line so as not to be a hazard to the wilder members of the motoring community. We could have set some steel posts with reflectors at intervals such that HGVs could not be accommodated and then farther down the road the spacing could have been reduced so that only cars could park and therefore not be a nuisance to the people living there. This would have retained the very useful stopover parking space that people had enjoyed for the last 40 years at the top end of the road. The cyclist could easily have been accommodated merely by resurfacing the existing footpath because after all there are very few of those. Now if the job had been done in this way I suggest that the overall cost would have been less, probably significantly less, than 10% of the money which has been expended. How much has been expended? Well, the original 2016 fiasco, I see, or I have seen, a figure of £40,000 attached to this. And of course, this has been entirely wasted. I made a freedom of information request to KCC to find the actual cost of the more recent project, uh, but they were not forthcoming. But I did get an estimated, preliminary estimate figure for the, for the work, and that was £115,000. So one would anticipate, perhaps, that the actual work cost more than this. Now, I have not uh, been party to any of the previous debates and arguments that might have gone about this uh, project. So I may be missing something. But if I am, I would certainly like to know what it might be.